Hi everyone, John Davenport here from Fogropoly.com with another Let's Edit video. Uh, one of the things people ask me a lot about is shooting the stars or taking photographs of the stars. And uh, I like to try and, you know, show you a little, a little bit different stuff in these videos. So I'm going to take a look at this photograph here and I'm going to show you three different ways to deal with this very underexposed photograph of the night sky. Um, you can see my settings that I used were ISO 1000, 11 millimeters, f2.8, and a 10 second exposure. If I were to do this photograph again, I'd bump this up 25 to 30 seconds or so, <coughs> just to get much more light in this uh, scene. Um, another thing that I may do differently if I were to photograph something like this again is to try and find a way to have an off-camera light illuminate some of the foreground because as you can see right now you just get kind of an outline of these trees and if you look really closely you might be able to tell there's a road here in the foreground but once I hit the auto exposure button here in the or the auto tone button here in the basic tab you can see there's a little house here um, there is a road there's some telephone poles and you know, some grass and everything. And what I'm going to do is kind of show you how to kind of control this, this overall uh, photograph and bring it back in because one of the things you'll notice as well is that there's a whole bunch of noise going on, right? Um, if I zoom in here, you can see all these purples and greens and we don't want this. And our sky is really overexposed as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a really quick way to get something out of this photo. And that would be to kind of drop the exposure down to where you really enjoy what's going on in the sky. So I'm just going to kind of work and make everything else kind of second priority and just see how good I can make the sky look for what I'm going for here. And really quickly, I mean, you can see just by dropping the exposure a little bit from that high plus almost five, you really start to bring these stars back into the frame and... Um, the clouds start to have a little more definition to them but of course you lose all your foreground interest except for maybe a little bit of the road but that hut's pretty much hidden so one quick thing you can do is you can actually just clone this hut out because in all honesty it's a nice little bonus of a compositional element but um, it's not necessarily required because you do have the road and the stars and everything else that's going on and if people don't know it's supposed to be there then no one would be really the wiser so this is actually a really good photograph here um, or a really good processing of this photo I may crop in a little bit or clone out these telephone poles depending on your choice um, just to get rid of them <laughs> but you know that's one really quick edit and that only took a couple seconds to go from this really underexposed, very dark photograph to something that um, kind of shows you the stars and everything that's going on. Uh, so now really quickly, I'm just going to reset this back to here. And then I'm going to go back to the auto exposure uh, area and again work from this area um, of the of the photograph. So now I'm going to once again drop the exposure down because again I think that plus four or close to five is a little too high and we don't really want to do that. But what we're going to do is instead, um, especially for the whole photograph, but what I'm going to do is instead bring a great graduated filter in here from the bottom uh, right hand side a little bit and just add the exposure back into the bottom half of the photograph. Now of course what we do is we basically end up doing the same thing, but now we can control this bottom area a little bit better. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go back into this graduated filter, the one that I just made. And you know, you can play around with it. You can add some contrast and maybe um, see what the highlights do. Um, since it's, you know, right around the horizon, you may want to lower the highlights down to really um, kind of bring some of this horizon light back in. You can try some of the shadow detail, see what that does. Um, I kind of like bringing the shadows down a little bit. <laughs> and we'll fix the hut later in a second. I'm going to try and add a little bit of clarity to really kind of make this um, yellow line really kind of stand out. And maybe even a little bit of, sh uh, of the saturation. But I don't really like that because as I add saturation, everything else starts to turn yellow. So I may actually drop the saturation a little bit. You know, may, maybe just bring it down a little. Or I can even try and bring down the warm, the, um, 
the temperature here. So bring that down, cool that off a little bit, bring a little saturation back in. You know, you play around with these until you kind of like them. I may reduce a little bit of the noise, um, not a lot, but this is only being applied to the bottom half of the photo, so I'm not losing any stars, which is uh, a problem when you try and uh, reduce noise. If you uh, try and denoise a photograph in Lightroom um, or in many other denoisers, uh, if they have a lot of these very small stars in them, they'll actually be removed. So I'm doing that now in uh, the graduated filter to kind of help out on that situation. And then finally, I'm going to come in here with my adjustment brush, and I'm just going to paint in on this um, grass on the top here of the uh, row. And then I will add a little bit of light to this area, just to kind of, you know, give it a little more character and um, kind of make sure I draw attention to this uh, little house in the background. So that's pretty good. Um, another really interesting edit, I think. I might add a little contrast to it just to bring it back. Um, so that's another interesting edit. Um, we can go back here. Again, not much going on in this very underexposed, very dark photograph. You don't really know. Yeah, you can tell it's a photo of the sky, but you don't know anything else that's going on there. Then we go to our processed photo and uh, once again, you know, you'd remove anything else and do some other cleanup, but this is basically the uh, edit that you would finish up with. So then one other thing that you could do, because, you know, a lot of noise is uh, found in the colors areas of the photographs, um, especially since, you know, how I pointed out, it was all that, like, uh, really uh, red and green color that was uh, being uh, very distracting in the other edits that were very bright. So one thing you can do is come to the, your black and white edit. And because grain kind of looks good, in my opinion, in a black and white photograph, and because you just have um, so much else to work with here, or so much less to work with, I, I think this particular photograph looks really pretty good as a black and white. Um, but, I mean, that could just be my opinion. I might add a little more contrast to the overall photo and maybe even notch the exposure up just a touch, uh, just to give it a little more of a punch there, because we're not worried so much about the noise. I may see what adding a little shadow detail does, or even a little clarity to the overall photo. Um, but, you know, a black and white image, when you have a high noise photograph, sometimes black and white's the best way to go. So I hope you learned something today. I hope uh, you really like this Let's Edit series. I've been getting a lot of great comments, a lot of people clicking that like button down below, and a lot of people have even started sending me emails asking for particular topics, uh, which I'm more than happy to include into this. I really would love uh, help figuring out ideas as to what you want to learn and what you want to know about Lightroom. Um, or if you have other questions about different software, I'm also looking to branch this series out and to add more um, than just a once a week type of thing, maybe a couple times a week. So uh, yeah, leave a comment below or send me an email on my contact page on my website. I'd be happy to help you out. And if you haven't joined my forum yet, I'll put, there's always a link below all of these videos to join the community forum. It's, uh, you know, there's par part of the stuff you can do. Um, talk about these videos, you can talk about other photography, you can share your own photos and all sorts of good stuff. So I hope to see you on that uh, forum and I hope to see you uh, continuing to watch these videos in the future. Thank you for watching this week. I'll be back once again next week with another Let's Edit video. And uh, for now, keep on clicking. Bye.